Okay, so now one of the most common car buying questions that we get is what is the best hot hatch to buy? And usually our answer is this, the Volkswagen Golf R Mark 7.5. So in today's video, I am going to explore why the Golf R Mark 7, specifically the Mark 7.5, is such a complete all-round package. Now, when it first came out in 2012, despite its relatively conservative appearance, the Golf Mark 7 was by all accounts a revolutionary product. In fact, if you drive it back to back with a Golf Mark 6, you would realize that any equivalent variant of the Golf Mark 7 is significantly superior in terms of dynamics as well as refinement. And the Golf R is no different. With the 7.5, Volkswagen makes significant improvements, further fine-tuning an already excellent package to make it a thoroughly complete all-rounder. So, the thing is, with the Golf Mark 7.5, regardless of what engine combo you choose, you're looking at a very good car. But with the Golf R, you're getting the complete package. In fact, the Golf R was such a competent, such a complete package, it rendered the GTI almost irrelevant, which is unfortunate, you see, because the GTI was the name with history, it was the name with heritage, it was the definitive hot hatch. And when Volkswagen came out with the Golf R, it made the GTI, well, second best in the family. It made the GTI the car you bought because you couldn't afford the Golf R. Now, what I like most about the Golf R is that this car is the epitome of understatedness. It is a car that theoretically, not anybody would do it, but theoretically, you can convert this to look like a 1.4 TSI and not many people will be wiser. You see, look at the design of the front bumper. Now, granted, this particular example has been given a matte black wrap, but, you know, which makes it even more understated, but at the same time, a bit more sinister. But you see, the performance styling cues on this car are very, very mild. You've got, like, this chiseled edges of the front bumper here. Then you've got the uh, gloss black highlights here. You've got a little subtle R badge there on the grill and that's it. So there's no flare view arches. There's no enlarged air intakes. It is all a very subtle. I mean, look at the wheels. Simple, 10 spoke design. The side mirrors, of course, has the carbon fiber finish, but it's just that, a carbon fiber finish. No flare, no spikes, no fins and all that. Just a very simple, understated design. Even the fender panel itself it's pretty much the same fender panel as you get with a regular Golf. And the theme of subtlety continues here at the back. I mean, look at the spoiler. Look at the diffuser. Yes, you got quad tail pipes, but see how undramatic the whole design is. It really looks hardly any different from the outside if you compare it with a Golf 1.4 TSI or a Golf GTI, which is refreshing because a lot of performance flagship models try and shout very hard their credentials, whereas the Golf R tries very hard to not shout its credentials. Okay, we are not going to spend too much time looking at things like boot space, rear seats. I'm just going to quickly take you to the driver's seat. Okay, now this example, you can see the original color is this mustard yellow, which the owner has given it the matte black wrap. So look at the seats. At one glance, looks hardly different from the seats that you would find in a regular golf, but look at the thick side bolstering here with this carbon fiber look treatment on the upholstery, okay? So you've got the metal pedals down there as well, but look at this, the badging here and all that, all very, very subtle, very, very subtle. So the steering wheel here, you've got a subtle R badge here. Engine start stop button. Okay, the instrument cluster is a digital screen. Center screen here, you've got a very subtle Volkswagen Golf R startup screen. That's it. Everything here is as 
exactly as per what you get in a regular golf okay you don't even have like a funky different gear knob you got a four motion batch here engine start stop button here now one little ergonomic flaw is that i'm not sure whether they have this with the left hand drive model but here in the right hand drive models see these are the driving related functions drive mode selection okay auto start stop on off stability control this is put on the far side of the panel where the view of it is obstructed by the gear lever now one of the earlier one of the flaws of the mark 7 ui was that in order to activate driving mode okay i still remember testing the early ones you have to trigger this and then you can then only you can use the touch screen to select your driving mode but this one with the 7.5 they made a very subtle update where you can just keep pressing the button to toggle the driving modes okay so as we all know with the mark 8 golf well there's some uh, some debate on the effectiveness of all that mass of touchscreens but here in the mark 7.5 Volkswagen has just the right balance of digitization and also physical controls all right so and also what's noteworthy is the build quality inside here absolutely fantastic all the instruments all right presented in fantastic clarity easy to read in typical Volkswagen style easy to operate and yeah it's overall yeah a bit of a technical and warrant be in but a pleasant a pleasant place everything just feels well put together okay you know what's greatly ironic is that now I return this car to its owner <laughs> sayang lah after just washing all right uh, under the rain yeah but uh, the good news for you the viewer is that I can now tell you the experience of this car in the rain and this really is one of the central tenets of the Golf R's appeal because you see the Golf R from its 2 liter engine makes 300 horsepower 400 newton meters of torque plus minus lah depending on tune some versions have 280 horsepower some have 310 but around 300 horsepower okay and in a front wheel drive setup like most hot hatches do that can be a pretty handful in bad weather conditions but not the golf r the golf r with its all-wheel drive system allows you to put that power down in absolute confidence so one of the criticisms that the golf r often get is that versus cars like the civic type r versus cars like the mercedes 45 amgs the renault megan rs is that the golf r can sometimes feel too subdued not raw enough too civilized not exciting but the flip side of the coin now is that because the Golf R is so civilized, this is a car that you can drive and enjoy in almost any occasion, right? You can take this thing, track it in Sepang over Sunday, and then, pop, Monday you drive the same car to work. See, like right now, driving this through uh, what you call that through rain soaked road i am foot on the gas with 100 percent confidence not many cars give me that kind of rock solid feeling not even my own not even my own it's like you know you know regardless how slippery the load the road is how you put the power down the car will just go and it will go Okay, so in case you're wondering, it's a public holiday, so the roads are a bit clear. And oh my god! Oh. And you see, the thing is, right, you can put your foot down, the car, 
the way the car accelerates like holy shit. I can tell you that this is a car, the, the engine and drivetrain combo, right? This is a car that you will not run out of acceleration under almost any road going circumstance. Right? You will need something like a long drag strip in order to max out the acceleration potential of this car. So basically, right, for the most part, when you drive this car and if you decide to go full throttle, you will need to back off before the car unleashes its full potential, let me put it that way. And the thing is now, when traffic builds up in front, now when you go gentle on the throttle, it's so civilized. It behaves no different from a Golf 1.4 TSR. Okay. It's like this is a car that can jackal and hide just as quickly as the Alpha and Well Fire in front of you moves in and out of your lane. Okay, now you see like right now I'm coming on around a bend. Man, it's been a while since I have driven a car that has given me the kind of confidence to just keep my foot planted on the throttle. Oh, okay. See, you see right here, I, I can't show this on my camera, but right here at this spot, another car spun all right but me i just kept my foot on the throttle and i went around the bend with zero fuss zero drama now to all those people who said oh the golf is too civilized too undramatic well there are certain circumstances that i will happily happily take undramatic all right and and this may sound counterintuitive to many people, but the Golf R is, is just such a wonderful all-round car. You can use this as a performance hot hatch you can enjoy. Or if you're the type where you have a lot of ground to cover in a day, there are few machines out there that allow you to cover that ground with such brutal effectiveness right with such confidence you know just tell that 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 gives you that assuring feeling to keep your foot planted on the floor all right as you as you rush to your next appointment as you rush to reach your 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 kids go on time before the bell rings as you rush home for to to lie in the booty call from your wife there are cars that are fast in a scary kind of way but the golf r is fast in such an unscary way it is scary it's brutal effectiveness and and in that sense i can sort of see why there are some people who who after a year or two with this car, they don't know what to do with it because it makes this car makes driving fast so fucking easy. So damn easy. Way. It's like, let's put it this way. Let, you, you just imagine the situation. Right now you're driving on, on a highway. Okay, there's a car in front of you that's obviously slowing you down. The floor move aside. What happened? You step on the accelerator, you zoom past the car, but two seconds later, you are back on the you're on the back side of another car that is slow again. It's like, you go, chuk, 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 chuk. the ease in which you, you can, you can cover ground at a rapid pace with this car is almost borderline unnatural. So if you want to go fast anywhere, effectively fast, there are few machines that do it better than a Golf R, let's put it that way. And you know, it's, and, and what's funny is that you know, when you go to Europe, the Volkswagen Golf occupies the same kind of, of product positioning as a Porodua Maivi in the sense that it is an everyday car for everybody regardless of your social status. So it's like you are, you are, you can be a, a, 
a fresh grad. You can be a senior manager. You can be a retiree. You can be a CEO, whatever. Wherever in life you are, you will never look out of place in the golf. It's ridiculous, Re really, really ridiculous. How easy to access the performance of this car. Absolutely ridiculous. And the thing is that, right, this, remember, is the performance flagship of the golf range. It's not at all uncomfortable. The ride quality is... Yes, it is firmer than a Golf 1.4 TSI, right? Granted. It's more comfortable than a BMW 330i, okay? So it is, a, overall, it is a setup that you can live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you put this car in the hands of, say, an average driver who, who is not interested at all in driving fast, Right? He just wants to potter around town. This car will do it. Right? It, it does not have that frantic feeling when you decide to drive it. There are some, you see, some cars, some fast cars, performance cars, when you choose to drive them slowly, there's that. You, you have that beast in a cage feeling from the engine. With the Golf Art, you don't have that feeling. You want to go slow, the car will just inch along, potter along slowly with you. You want to whack it, the car is ready to rock. This is a car where, really, Volkswagen has built it as such a competent, all-rounder, all-occasion car that even I could conceivably look at this and see it as a, as a feasible only car means that I can I can have just this car and be done with it. That's it. I, I don't need anything else. All right? So coming back to the premise of the Golf R, this is by all accounts the most complete performance package you can get. And Yes, the only reason why you will not want a Golf R when you go for something else like your Civic Type R, your A45 and whatnot, is perhaps, yes, you want something more raw, more exciting, more, a bit more drama or whatnot. But if you want performance, all right, no-nonsense performance, a car that will cover the distance with brutally effective speed, you cannot look past the Golf R, all right? This is, I would say, the peak, the pinnacle of the hot hatch genre. Yeah. So brutally effective, it's not funny.